so there's two more that I wanted to show, um, and they require like um, different software. So one of them is Alchemy, and Alchemy is a weird, uh, weird piece of software, and uh, it's it's a good weird though. It requires JavaScript, um, and it's it's very um, simple. There's no like real undo. So what you can do is you can pick a, a thin or a thick line style. You can pick over or under. So we'll go over. We'll do like a heavier line weight. We can pick our color. We'll just pick black. Um, we can set our transparency from opaque to semi-transparent. Um, if we hit create, it's, it gives us a bunch of different shapes that we can create. So let's say we want, um, let's pick s speed shapes. So the faster your cursor moves, the more different it will um, uh, change. Then um, we won't affect the shapes for this one, right? Okay, so if I take my cursor and I start drawing, the faster I go, like the more different it is, and it creates all this chaos as I click down and, and do stuff, right? So if I begin there and I start drawing in one of these little boxes that we've got, it creates these strange stylizations and strange shapes um, that you can then export this file, pull it into Photoshop and, or another piece of software and do something really interesting with it. And um, when you're trying to create textures or, or do something unexpected or you really want to invent and you're bored, like this is the way to do it. You know, there's, um, let's see. Pull shapes are interesting because it pulls clip art, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, let's see. We do just like shapes. And then if we do the effect, we could do um, displacement, which is kind of neat because any direction that you go, it just ch changes these shapes. It's so crazy. Um, you know, so I've got this effect on and it's changing all of this. So what would be interesting is, you know, you could create a texture, right? And this could become the background texture for something that you work with and paste into something else, right? Okay. It's a little bit mind bending, right? Um, and I can turn displace off and I can have gradient happen, right? See how the longer that I go, it creates that gradient. Now if I switch it um, to where I have a, a wider line, right? so this is a fill, a fill polygon sort of shape. So this allows me to just click on an area and circle around and, and it fills with a gradient, which is super cool. Um, interesting if I just keep changing the colors, right? So I could go through and I could create all kinds of uh, marks like this to create textures. And, and then I could just paint with it, right? I could, you know, I could sketch out, um, I could just create regular shapes, turn off the gradient effect, you know, go back to a regular line, right? Um, I could pick a more normal color and then I could say, well, I want to paint like, you know, a, uh, I want to paint like a funky like tree or something like that. Maybe I want to paint like one of those oak trees that we see around there, like a live oak or something. And then this is probably, this will be like the ground of the live oak right here. And I could take this style, I could pick like a brown, right? I could begin to paint in some of the oak tree by filling it, right? Then I could pick like all kinds of yellows and yellow greens. So I could get a light coming in from the left side. Right? Probably want a darker green, right? Something down here. I can fill in these areas with that. See how we're getting kind of like cartoon tree-ish? 
So this is kind of like an interesting one because it's a little bit of controlled chaos. And, uh, and I like it a lot for that reason because I would never sit there in Photoshop and come up with these shapes or this method or, or paint like this. Um, so the, it's like the software is helping me define like a new way to, to sort of break out of myself and my own style. You know, I can then take that style and add like um, uh, splatter shapes in there. Um, or hang on. So I could do that speed shape thing again. And this could change the edge quality, right? So as I build up these colors in this color range, you know, I can change the edge quality of that polygon that I'm filling, right? And it can look even more organic. I could go in and just keep changing colors and you know make some lighter yellows. And in a way, like that looks even more natural and more leafy because it's getting a lot of texture that I didn't necessarily plan on, you know. Um, anyway, that's the controlled chaos of alchemy. And uh, be careful because that one doesn't really have like um, many ways to save. Um, another fun one is called Rebel, R-E-B-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. And, um, you know, this one I think is the, uh, the ultimate watercolor tool right now. Open it up with a simple thing and I'm gonna select this watercolor brush. I'm gonna say like 50% water, full opacity, decent size. Let's make a bigger size. Yeah, huge size. I can pick um, flat wash, okay. And you'll see that it creates like a little transparent blue, which is uh, nice and awesome. So let's say we're painting this, uh, this particular electronics area. So we had an orange, or like a yellow orange, kind of desaturated. Um, but we'll go in and um, select everything and delete everything in that layer. Deselect that. Okay. So now we're starting for real. So let's wash out one of these areas. Let's say we want the water to go with the light direction, which is kind of down like that. And we want a lot of water. So we can make this water run by using this tilt control, right? And then we can tilt it and just do a little bit. So as we paint, this is gonna run all down in that direction. So we can get uh, more saturated here. We can change the size to be real small. We can go more towards the, the white-ish area. Paint in there. Watercolor, you can only get darker, remember? See it buzz like that? Super fun. And we can let it, um, we can let it do things like that, and uh, and we can just play around with, like, how these color blocks affect each other. It's kind of amazing that this can be done digitally, because there's only one way to get it really in analog, and that's to do it watercolor, you know. And we could just keep, keep painting, keep letting it drift, and. You know, kind of embrace the chaos. Maybe we can pretend there's like a pole that's going down here, right? Going upwards and it's kind of just, it's amazing to me that this is digital still, you know? I've been doing this for a while. I think I've started fooling around with Photoshop in the 90s, but it's just like, this to me still blows my mind how far this has come. You know, get some darker areas in there. Once you've wet down a certain area, like 
it's going to kind of stay like that. Okay, so we can then, um, you know, build up layers from there. Um, add a layer and then go in with, you know, lighter colors, and that's how we get our lighter colors back. But it's still gonna like bleed and blend around because we're still working in watercolor. So anyway, this is a piece of software called Rebel. R E B E L L E. So I like that, and um, I think that's about it um, for sketch methods. So for an assignment, you're just gonna pick a few of these methods and uh, and try them out. But you know this, I showed you Rebel for this one. But the basic method is to build up from like a texture, a textured element, um, including a little bit of chaos. You can do similar things with any, almost any software um, to build up with, with beginning with textures. So in fact, let's go back to Photoshop and I'll show you what I mean for that. So let's add a new one. We can take our, um, Take a more heavily textured brush, like this oil basic brush, right? And we just want to get in there and start lightly creating a bunch of textures. We can do like different brush textures on there. We can turn down brush opacity so that um, it's not like completely overtaking. And we use a bigger brush than we think we should. And we can begin to just slowly build and kind of almost like fight the texture a little bit. And we can, you know, dot for colors that are already on there. changing the colors and changing the way that they work and just keep working through the textures trying to find the shapes that we want right because some of this too is about faking the idea that this is like a nuanced individualized interesting image even though it's digitally created so if we just keep painting keep working it we can create some interesting interesting stuff here And we can just fight the texture and keep working until we find something interesting and fun that we like. So this is kind of a painting method turned into a sketch method. But I quite enjoy it and uh, I want you to give it all give it all a shot.